Hi there, and welcome to episode number 47 of Joy Sightings. In this edition, I will read three more parables of Safed the Sage. Safed the Sage was the pen name of William E. Barton, who was a congregational pastor in large cities in the east of the United States about a hundred years ago. His parables were first published in the denominational Sunday School magazine. They are delightful because of his affected use of King James English and also capital letters, which you can't see when I'm reading them, of course. You can get this book, The Wit and Wisdom of Safed the Sage, from the Library of Congress at their website. Use the category menu item in our DBRP listening app or at our website to find all of the Joy Sightings series. Today I read these three parables. The next time, Eden and the Serpent, and The Height of the Sky. I've previously read this first one, but I'm going to read it again because it flows into the next one. The Next Time There lived in the town of my boyhood a damsel whose name was Dinah, and I liked her, and knew not but that I could like her more if I were to drop everything else and give her my exclusive attention. And I went away and abode for certain months in another place, and Dinah came thither to visit, and I determined to show her a good time, for she was from my home town. And Dinah was willing, but also was pursuing a policy of watchful waiting in certain other directions." And there came the fourth day of July, and the Sunday school picnic. And some rode thither in buggies, but for the most part on hay racks or any old way. But I stood in with a man who had two saddle horses, and he was particular to whom he loaned them. And when I came unto the house where she lodged, Leading one horse and riding one, Dinah's countenance fell. And she said, Safed, it is good of thee to take me to places, and I like it, but thou art only a boy from the home town, and I would fain ride in one of the loads that I may meet others as well as thee. And I went to a friend who was driving his own two horses that were hitched to a hay rack. And beside him was his best girl, and her name was Ruth. And upon the haystack were young men and maidens. And I said, Sam, wilt thou do me a favor? And he said, I will give thee anything save Ruth only. And I said, Take thou my two saddle horses for thee and Ruth, and let me drive thy team. And he said, Let us hasten, Ruth, and climb down from here and mount the horses. Now when Dinah saw that Ruth and Sam were glad, then she was more snippy than ever. But that day was not wholly lost, for there rode on the hayrack two maidens whom I had not met before, and one of them was Keturah. Now after fourteen years Dinah wrote to Keturah and said, I would visit thee. And Keturah wrote and said, Come. So she lodged with us four days, and she was still unmarried. And on one night there was a lecture, and Keturah cared not to go, but stayed with her five children, and I took Dinah to the lecture. And as we were returning, Dinah spake to me, saying, 
Dost thou remember the fourth day of July fourteen years ago? And I told her that I had not forgotten. And she said, When thou didst take me home that night, thou didst say to me, I'm sorry that thou hast not enjoyed this day, and I hope it will fare better the next time I invite thee. And I said, I remember. And she said, Safed, this is the next time. And I considered that some people who wait for the next time will have a long time to wait. Eden and the Serpent Now the manner of my wooing of Keturah was on this wise. After that Dinah had been rude to me, I saw Keturah now and again, but I was minded that I would avoid entangling alliances, for I was laboring hard that I might gain an education, and silver and gold had I none. But there came a night in June when I and the stars looked down on Keturah, and mine heart told me that I loved her. Yet spake I not to her of love that night. But I went to my room, and I regarded mine empty pocket-book, and I said to it that it might go hang, for I would not let another night descend on earth till I should have her as mine own. And on the next day I sought her, and I was on horseback, and I led another horse and I entreated her that she would ride with me far into the hills, and she did so. And when we were far from the habitations of men, our horses stopped that they might drink at a mountain stream, and there I asked her if she would ride with me down the long road till the end of life, and she told me that she would. Then we rode forward, and our horses climbed up a little hill, and there ran across the road before us a rattlesnake. Now in the region where we then were, if a man start on a journey, and there cross his path a rabbit, then will he return unto his house, and go not forth again that day, but begin his journey again upon the morrow. And albeit I care not for such like superstitions, yet was it an uncanny thing that a rattlesnake should cross before us on the very first mile of the road whereon we travelled into our Eden. For the world was bright with the sunlight of June, but the venomous beast fled not away, but coiled himself by the roadside with his head erect and his forked tongue out, and his rattles making an unpleasant noise. And I cast my bridle rein into the hand of Keturah, and I leapt from my saddle, and I said, Whether it be a portent of evil I know not, but the Lord do so to me, and more also, if there shall live a rattlesnake that can cross our path this day and get away with it. And Keturah said, Go not nigh unto him, but return and let us ride on, for he is dangerous and his bite is fatal. But I heeded not the word that she spake, and I did as I said that I would do. And somewhere among the memorials of my early days are there the rattles of a snake. Thus did I change an omen of evil into a prophecy of good. And I mounted my horse, and Keturah said, Thou art an ardent lover and a fierce fighter. I would rather that thou wouldst love me than fight me. And I told her that that also was my preference. Now since that day the road hath been long, and the milestones of our journey have been thirty and three, 
and our pathway hath been crossed often, and by many things good, and a fair assortment of things evil, but the good have been more than the evil. And that old serpent which is the devil hath never pulled off on us any of his Adam and Eve stuff. And I have meditated often on that first serpent that came into our Eden on the day when God made Keturah from one of my ribs and sent her back to her place nigh unto mine heart. And I have reflected that that snake could not have suspected what combination he was up against, or he would have departed elsewhere. For no serpent can do very much harm in the Eden of a husband and wife who do continually love one another. Now I know not why Patrick should have been able to get the snakes out of Ireland, and the Lord God should have permitted them to be in Eden. But this I have discovered that if we may not have Edens with fences that are snake-proof, the next best thing is to strafe the serpents when they first appear and dispose of them forever. And this would make almost any Eden happy. The Height of the Sky I have a little granddaughter, and she is the daughter of the daughter of Keturah. And on many days last summer she spake to me, saying, Grandpa, I want to swing. And whatsoever I was doing, I did it no more, and I went and swung her. Now on one of those days she looked up into the great pine trees where the swing was hung, and she asked me questions and I showed her how the trees divided into limbs, and the limbs separated into smaller branches, and the branches into twigs, and the twigs feathered out into delicate pine needles. And all this she saw, and she saw that there was blue beyond the tops of the trees, which showeth in marvelous beauty through the tracery of the pine needles. And she asked, Grandpa, what is that? And I told her that the blue above the tops of the trees was the sky. And she looked long at the sky, and it appeared very high as she saw it through the treetops. And when she saw how high it was, she considered and she said, But I can hardly reach it. That was all she said of it, and she is not yet three years old. She could hardly reach it, even as the man of God in olden times thought the heaven and the knowledge of God too wonderful for him, and said, It is high, I cannot attain unto it. And yet she did not say she could not entirely reach it, for the sky beginneth not far above the treetops, but at the very ground, and the little damsel toucheth it with her fingertips all the day long. And they are such delicate little fingertips. O my God, as the heaven is high above the earth, so are thy ways above our ways, and we can hardly reach thee. Yet do I thank thee that thou art not wholly out of reach. Thou art as near unto me as the sky is nigh unto the little maiden, and that is not quite out of reach.